Uh, this project is to replace, recap, staircase, handrails. For the caps, you have to cut off all the overhangs. Perfect. No, don't worry about anything here. This is going to be re-veneered. We're going to veneer this in maple and it's going to be painted white. The risers are going to be veneered in maple and painted white as well. The treads are going to be capped in oak, red oak, stained nice and dark. Pickets are being replaced with white square pickets, wood pickets. The the newel posts are being capped over, I'm capping over it with, um, with wood to give it a nice bulky uh, look. The handrails themselves, because it's a curved staircase, I'm not going to make new handrails. We're going to strip them down and we're going to stain them in the same stain as the treads. Now it's time to start taking the handrails apart. Took off the the metal already. Now to get these spindles out, it's just a twist game. Just like that, and then we're gonna, gonna drill all those out, but we're not gonna drill them out right now. Now we're gonna get the old finished off. Thick. Don't forget the underside. to spray the spindles and the balusters I got a case of them a couple of cases of them they're pre-finished white but they're not the same white that I need so and I can spray them I get two sides at once go around a couple times everything's sprayed but I'll be able to spray them all in about three minutes so beats rolling them or painting them any other way this is where the money is made, being efficient and being able to do things in bulk. Now that's first coat sprayed. <clears throat> Second and hopefully the last coat.
Well, you know how they say it's on the prep work. Proof. James is cutting the nose off the treads to make them flush. What's so funny? Don't film this one. This one didn't work out. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm going to be stripping all the handrails. Because the handrails are curved, going up the staircase, I'm not going to rebuild them or replace them. That's a lot of work. And nothing wrong with these ones. The style is okay. <laughs> long pieces um, it's really hard to to keep them uh, uh, wet with the uh, stripper hey can I turn off everything but the black lights sir I don't care about anything cool wow this place is gross because they dry out by the time you get to the other side sticks are really long so you do them in segments sure here's another way though now this could be anything it does not have to be any form of plastic. More flexible the better. Nothing as thick as like um, vapor barrier or anything that's too thick. So you want to really coat this thing. Or get it slop and wet. There, that whole thing is soaked. I'll take this plastic and wrap it. Now the Paint stripper can't evaporate off of it. So it will stay in there and it will do its job. Okay, we've done three. So, by that time, let's see how this turns out. Uh, I'm guessing that'd be pretty good. Oh, yeah, she's coming off real nice. Right down to the wood. So, for this process, uh, it's the first time I've used this one. Uh, this is Premium Stripper. Montreal has the best strip clubs in the world. They do? Yeah, they're unbelievable. The girls up in Canada are gorgeous, and they all play ice hockey, so they lose their teeth by age 10. And I'm in love with it. Well, with a variety of sanders. I am going to, and even hand sand, I'm going to clean these up. All the handrails are done, and they feel amazing. And uh, next, I'm going to be staining it, and then I'm going to use the sanding sealer, just so we can get a, um, a quicker top coat. Uh, but anyway, that's, what, uh, that's what's going on now. I like to hang them if I'm, if possible, and I have lots of space in this house, so. And we are using a wiping stain, nice and dark. Looks very good. All right. Well, now it's time to get these treads all stained up, sanded and stained. Now, I know they look great. So I'm gonna take my random orbital with about 220 grit, and I'm gonna buzz it all down and clean up these lines, add a little water to see if, if I've gotten them all, and clean everything up. Now we're gonna be using sanding sealer. Use a foam applicator as to stop air bubbles. Alright, there we go. My headlamp is definitely not giving it the best look. There we go. Right, risers are installed. 
And we started installing the treads, fitting them. We've got three done. They're fairly good. Actually quite good. You take your craft paper and you line it up and cut it flush with all of the edges. Grab it to fit, and then trace it onto your blank tread. Tape it down, trace it on, and then cut this. I'm using a circuit saw, and I'm just setting up a straight edge, cutting along that, and then jigsaw on the rest, and then take it down, fit it, you know, belt sand, adjust, take it down, fit it, you know, two or three times. I clamp the straight edge on, I did it exactly in this case it's four and a quarter inches over and off we go you cut a guaranteed cut a straight line every time close fit but there's a slight gap so you scribe just a little line and then sand it. Go ahead. Now, in order to get a good, good stain and smooth finish, get a nice wet rag, wipe down all of your sanded materials. How nice that looks. Sometimes you can see if you've sanded enough. If you see swirls or scratches, once it's wet, you know you got to sand a little bit more. And this one's looking pretty good. And this will raise the raise the grain and when this is dry we'll give it a quick sand with 220 or something and uh, it'll knock off all that little bit of fur that sticks up this is the finished handrail portion uh, that does look real nice and that's what color everything's going to be oh you can really feel that grain come up after i wet it wow I don't know if you can see it, and if I go like this, you can see I'm already pulling the grain off of my bare hand. See that? It was, per it was This was perfectly sanded. But yeah, all of that is just coming right off. Now that, once you stain it, would have been all rough and standing up, and that would have shown up in your clip coat. Yeah, you don't want that. All the treads are stained. Because the other one's in another room. Well, they look good, right? Look at that. Well, here we are. These are all finished stained. They're very uniform. They look great. Especially that bottom one. Boy, does that look nice. Anyway, I have put one coat of sanding sealer on this one already. So I'm not going to do this little edge on the bottom because it's going to put it down somewhere to dry. So I'll deal with that after. But I should have all these done in about an hour or so. Pro tip. Put your clear coat on in the same direction as the stain. And when you have a grain change of direction, just do that last and smooth out your clear coat. Now don't forget to wipe them down with a tack cloth. Just give them a very light pass, pick up any dust or hairs that may have gotten on them while they were drying. Now, if you guys are looking for that truly, truly very dark finish, where basically all you can see is the texture of the grains, but the wood itself, you know, the finish is, is really dark. Like also this, if I did this one, it would be like solid brown. So if you're looking for that type of finish, after you put your sanding sealer on, you guys are not going to believe me, but put another coat of stain on. 
When you do that, it uniformly darkens. But essentially, if you put another coat of stain on right after this is dry, I mean truly dry, and put another coat of stain on, wipe that off, you know, so you have no excess, wait 24 hours, and then sanding seal it again, it will be dark. And a lot of people, you know, they wonder, how can you get like that really dark, rich furniture look that you see, um, you know, by expensive furniture, like uh, your your uh, tables or pianos or whatever. They're so dark. This is how you do it. Now, of course, they would probably production using spray stains and stuff like that. But this is how you would do it or how I would do it. Now, if you're struggling with this because the stain will actually reactivate a little bit and smear, for example, you can kind of see it right there. Let's watch the shadow. There we go. You can kind of see it right there. Um, that's because you're brushing and the, the stain will sort of reactivate and then you'll drag the stain. So kind of like you see my paintbrush, which I'm using today, brand new paintbrush. I really kind of prefer the foam. You don't have any air bubbles when you do it, but you know, this is sanding seal, it's not as important. So, but you can see the color of the stain has come into the, into the uh, sanding seal a little bit. It's not much. It's the opposite oil and water, but whatever. Um, the point is, if you're struggling a little bit, uh, and if you're not doing full strokes, and you like start in the middle and moving around, you're going to see these line, these brush lines. And if you're having a hard time, you know it's going to cost a few extra bucks, but I guarantee you'll have a nicer finish. If you get spray cans of uh, diamond coat. Uh, it's called diamond coat, Minwax diamond coat in the machine that you're looking for. Um, and if you spray that on, you probably get, you know, six or seven treads with one can. You're just looking to get a, an even coat on it, spray it on. You're never, at that point, you're never going to um, have any brush marks because you're not brushing. So afterwards, you could scuff it and then put your um, uh, other finished coats on. So, um, yeah, if you're having trouble and you're not getting that, that you have the beautiful stain, looks great, but you're having trouble getting the clear coat to look good, try spraying the first coat. After that, you can do all the brushing or hand wiping or whatever method you want to do after that for as many coats as you want to do, uh, and it'll turn out amazing. Oh, that would trick is, is a pretty much mandatory if you do a double uh, a double dark. So if you put a put a coat of sealer down, whether it be spray or or sanding sealer, and then you stain again to get that double dark, um, you you have no choice because you will because um, the stain won't soak in to the uh, to the to the wood. It'll be sitting on top of the uh, sealer. So therefore, when you, if you did a brush coat, you'd be just dragging that um, stain around with you. So you have to have to spray. Hardwooding the landing. Just going to give it a sand afterwards and then stain it to match the treads. This was carpet before. This is kind of a pro bono extra thing because I just happened to have it kicking around. It only took an hour or two to install it. You know, just because I want it to look good. The veneer is all done. Okay, I'm putting the finish coat on. Now what you do is you sand the treads with the 220 and go with the grain only. And then take a scuff pad and just double, double check them all. Go around the edges. Don't take your sandpaper on the edges, just on the flats. And do the rest with the scuff pad. Then tack cloth. And tack cloth them all completely off and then coat them. And your first coat. I've already done a couple. Ooh, 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 they look good, don't they? Well, these look beautiful. 220 again, just to get any furry bits off. And then recoat. This will be final coat. You don't want to put too many coats on because it becomes super slippery and 
people will actually fall down the stairs. And so, yeah, three coats, a sanding sealer, two finish. More than acceptable. Any more than that, like I said, you're going, taking a butt ride all the way down. Boom, 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 boom. And there it is. Finished painted white. I'm waiting for the treads. I've stained the landing and the nosing. Okay, on uh, this landing, because it's such an awkward place and I can't afford to have brush marks, just going to use my spray. Installing the treads. Ooh, doesn't that look beautiful? One handed. Alright, I should be more careful. Do two hands. There we go. Got a few done. They look mint. Minty. And here we have our post caps. Just slide right on snugly. Ooh, nice. Now, I didn't want the birdcage. I didn't, I just never liked it. I'm going to keep the rounded stair end and I'm doing a straight post. It's very, very much more modern. And then, on this side, I'm not going to put anything. I can just have it open. It's just a matter of leveling and getting them in place. So I'm taking the old ones, I'm using those as templates. I get them right, level them up, cut them, put them in, and then I trace them up to the new ones. I've already drilled my holes, well, some of the way up. Uh, I followed the old hole template, so should be in the same spacing. This is a cleaner look. I have put that one in already, and that was just, uh, I cut three quarters of an inch off each end, right here, and there, and welded the tab back on. I cut the tab off, the, uh, the angle bracket tab with a hole in it, um, and I welded it back on. One here, I cut this one off right here, moved it back um, three quarters of an inch, and re-welded it back on. I made some tread, uh, yeah, tread caps, tread protectors, whatever you want to call them. The foam on one side. And they are fantastic. Instead of having the handrail butt directly to the wall, I put a wall cap. And same as over here. I put wall caps everywhere upstairs as well. We made some caps. This is just window casing, step bevel window casing, on the uh, chop saw. I kept cutting them, four and, a half, four and three quarter, four and three quarter, four and three quarter, and then just glued them. That's it, it's just glue. wasn't for the amateur that's for sure putting on this curved handrail and cutting it precisely between two points I'd say that's good and screwed up from the bottom I used a black uh, hammered finish underneath and the caps are right there they're just need uh, one more coat after they're installed. I'll just glue and spike it with a couple nails. No, oh, there you have it. All finished. The staircase looks amazing. 
crisp lines. Looks really sharp. If you want to see more, click subscribe. If you like what you see, hit the like button. It helps me out.